So we know that Jesus walked into his home synagogue in Nazareth, and he walked in, and it was time for the reading, and he took the scrolls. It was his turn. He took the scroll of Isaiah, and he read from this right here, Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Then what happened? Then Jesus took that scroll and he rolled it up. He rolled it up. The Bible says, and handed it to the attendant, sat down, and said to everyone there, Today, in your hearing, these scriptures are fulfilled. <laughs> and they were very upset because they knew this was speaking of the Messiah. And they went to go th take him and stone him, to throw him off the cliff, which archaeologists have found there was a, a huge cliff in Nazareth. They've uncovered that. And they were going to throw him off there and stone him, but he walked among them because it wasn't his time, and he walked away. Now, Jesus stopped right there. Now, there's something very interesting about that Isaiah scroll. Remember, the scroll was continuous. It was one scroll with no chapter dividers or verse dividers. That's something that happened later, so we can reference. He took that away, and then what happened? The rest of Isaiah, he stopped, and the rest of Isaiah says this. Watch this. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And then later it says, Oh, grant those who mourn to, I'm sorry, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the cloak of praise instead of a dishearted spirit. As I am teaching this and recording this right now, Israel is at war right now. And it's very sad. They're at war, and right now they are suffering greatly. This is probably the worst war since Yom Kippur. And it was a surprise attack by the evil demonic Hamas. And I just want to encourage any of you who are in Israel to take courage because Jesus stopped there, but the scripture in Isaiah continued, and where it continued is for you, for Israel. Watch this. So watch this. Here it is, guys. Here, <laughs> This is so good. Here it is. Isaiah 62 continues, and it says, For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet. This is the Lord speaking right here, you guys. For Zion's sake. A lot of people say, like, you know, you, you can't be, don't be a Zionist Christian or, you know, that's, that's, that's just not right to be a Zionist Christian. Well, God's a Zionist. God's for Israel. Why aren't you? They're the apple of his eye still. Why aren't they the apple of your eye? And then it continues in Isaiah, until her righteousness goes forth like brightness. So all these beautiful scriptures about Jerusalem and Israel and her salvation like a torch that is burning. Isn't that beautiful? Kind of like a lighthouse, right? It will no longer be said of you forsaken. For as a young man marries a virgin, to your sons will marry you. And as the groom rejoices over the bride, so your God will rejoice over you. You And this is a lot like Psalm 45, right, that we talked about in that Joseph episode, the one that talks about the Gentile bride. You might want to check that out. But here we're seeing that God is saying, you know, hey, this is going to be a great time of rejoicing. So your God will rejoice over you. He's speaking about Israel. And the Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will never again give your grain as food for your enemies. 
So no longer will the enemies rule and, and conquer and come and take Israel from, from her own people after this time of great trouble that's going to come. So I want to encourage you, God has a plan for you who are in Israel. Take courage. Be like Joshua and Caleb. Have courage. Uh, know that Christians like me and others, we pray for you. My family, we pray for you. We love you guys. Jesus loves Israel. He does. And by the way, you might want to hit this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in all of the Old Testament or in all the Tanakh if you're in Israel, all of your scriptures, your Jewish scriptures, you'll see where he's found. And it's amazing. He's in all of it, you guys. So, hey, I love you. God bless you. And I will continue to pray for you.